Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're answering the question of what happens to all the big food that's made to break Guinness World Records. According to Guinness World Records, the de facto authority on world record breaking, this is one of the most common questions they're asked. Alongside what record is broken the most often, the heaviest lifted object with glue, according to them, and who holds the most Guinness World Record titles, Ashrita Furman with 125 records at last count. In regards to records involving comically giant food, as of 2011, Guinness has a policy in place that all giant food or records involving large amounts of food, such as most pizzas made in 24 hours, that's 7,539 by a team of Domino's employees in Queensland in 2012, it must be either donated, consumed, or sold for consumption for the record to be recognized as official. This stipulation was put in place for a number of reasons, but mostly was added to prevent such a large amount of food going to waste, something Guinness was being criticized for encouraging. Guinness allows those attempting records to choose between selling or donating giant food in acknowledgement of the fact that such records often require a considerable amount of money, and the option of selling it allows some of that money to be recouped. A second and perhaps less obvious reason for this particular stipulation is that it means the food produced, whatever that may be, has to be edible, making it much harder to break some of these giant food records. For example, when a company called Juicy's Outlaw Grill attempted to create a record-breaking 770-pound burger in 2011, their initial attempt failed when they were unable to cook the 600-pound beef patty they'd made all the way through, meaning the entire burger could not be eaten, and therefore they were unable to fulfill all of Guinness's stipulations to a satisfactory degree, even though they technically did make a 770-pound burger. The company did eventually succeed at breaking the world record and now holds the record for selling the largest commercially available hamburger in the world. The price? A mere $5,000 for over 1 million calories of burgery goodness, give or take, depending on the fat content. And if you're curious, a typical beef cow yields about 450 pounds or 200 kilograms of usable meat, so this world record was essentially about one and a third cow's worth of meat or about 6,000 McDonald's hamburgers. A a further stipulation of creating giant food for a world record attempt is that it must generally resemble the original food stuff it is based on. For example, a stipulation of creating a giant popsicle is that the final product must be able to stand upright like a regular popsicle without falling apart. This is a rule the company Snapple were unable to abide by when they attempted to create a record-breaking 35,000-pound stick of frozen goo in 2005 and inexplicably tried to erect it in the middle of New York in June. Despite careful preparation beforehand and keeping the giant popsicle frozen during transport to its final destination, the kiwi strawberry popsicle melted before it could be propped up, resulting in thousands of liters of pink sugary liquid shutting off several lanes of traffic while a bemused fire crew used hoses to wash it down the sewers. Presumably, the rats and other such creatures appreciated Snapple's efforts, even if they didn't get the world record. Perhaps next time they should probably think about doing it in December? Of course, because Guinness isn't always invited along to giant food cook-offs, there's nothing to really stop companies or individuals that create giant food from throwing it away after the attempt is complete. It's just that, if they do, the most recognizable record authority in the world won't recognize their attempt. This means the group in question won't get near the publicity, which is generally the point of these sorts of things. On top of that, if they aren't making the food item edible, they just completely wasted their money on the raw ingredients for no good reason. Needless to say, officials from Guinness are often invited to such events, and even when not, the food item is generally meant to be eaten after. And now for a random bonus fact. Ostriches don't hide their heads in the sand. In fact, they can run as fast as 45 miles per hour and sustain long distance running of about 30 miles per hour. They are also very maneuverable, using their wings to help rapidly change direction. Any predators they can't outrun, they can often kill with their powerful kicks and huge claw-like hoof on each foot. Why they have a reputation for hiding their heads in the sand is that they have incredible hearing and vision and usually spot predators before the predators spot them. When this happens, they often lay as flat as possible against the ground to attempt to just look like a mound of dirt in the distance. 
So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also over there on the right, do check out some of our other videos and thank you for watching.